This story begins on the back roads of Wisconsin. And I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, what the hell? I thought this was an air rifle sight. Well, I'm not going to fire a rifle in this video, but I can promise you animals will be shot and eaten. The truth is what I'm doing here is I'm training. I'm covering two to three hundred miles per week, actually. And I did this for the entire spring, totaling almost two thousand miles. Why on earth would a human do this to themselves? Well, I'm getting my doughy winter butt in shape. For what? For this! Hello, gentlemen. Behind me is the Sapoma. It's a concrete ship that sunk before World War II, I think. I'll take you inside and show you that in a second. I'll put a link down in the description so you can read about it. I once knew all about it. Years. So, Hurricane, or no, not Hurricane, Tropical Storm Debbie, uh, hindered us a bit. We got our teeth kicked in big time coming across the Gulf. I didn't film any of that because honestly we were just trying to survive. My shipmates are, the captain is Connor, and uh, well, I'm going to call him second mate. I'm first mate. I've been on this trip more. Um, that's Simon. Connor's like 60. Simon's 46. I'm 38. Connor's an old southern boy. This is his boat. He brings us out with him. This is a 25-foot sea craft. Simon is a Brit who moved to Chile and married an American. So his accent's all muddled up. The Bahamas. There are rules here. Uh, all breath hold dive, no scuba. Well, you can scuba dive, but you can't hunt on scuba. And there's no guns allowed in the Bahamas either. You can only use Hawaiian slings or pole spears. I prefer a pole spear. I would love to leave the image in your head of me just going down with a pole, all caveman style, but it really isn't that. Um, pole spears can be technical pieces of equipment. It's five feet of aluminum, two feet of carbon, so this can bend flex when the fish is on it and a foot of steel on the end there. I think eight feet, that's what it adds up to, eight feet in total. What you do, take this band, lock your thumb in there, slide this down, hold that, and when I release that sucker, it flings out of my hand like a harpoon. The name of this is Gatku. I've used many, uh, almost a dozen different pole spears. This is my favorite. A very nice guy named Dustin makes them. And I'll put a link to his website down in the description if you're interested. And uh, oh my gosh, mosquitoes! I gotta get in the water. The Sapoma is holding a little bit of fresh water somewhere in there, and there's mosquitoes everywhere coming out of it. <laughs> Let's go. And I'm going to talk about what we hunt a lot. I know I could just stay quiet and let the ocean speak for itself, but this stuff is just too fascinating for me to stay quiet. And our first target for this day is hogfish. So you can see the hogfish camo up next to these sea fans, and that's a strategy they employ to not get eaten. And then as soon as you kick them out over the sand, they turn gray again. Uh, very, very effective. However, we're not going for fish this big. This is a big male right here. Hogfish are actually both sexes. When a hogfish is small, it's a female. And when the female grows to a certain size, the largest in her area, so to speak, then she becomes a male. This is employed by a lot of fish in the sea, actually. Anyway, we don't need a big male. That's too much meat for us. Also, we prefer the taste of females anyway. They, uh, they have a different texture, a different structure to their meat. And one of the best ways to find smaller hogfish, or just more hogfish in general, is to poke one of them, you know, with the back of the spear, and then trail him, follow him. He or she will almost always lead you to more of them. Connor taught me this a few years back, and it works every darn time. The fish camouflages themselves so well that they're kind of hard to spot from the surface. So if you spot one, and you want to get more, or if that isn't the one you want, the size you want, then just give him a tap and follow right behind him. The meat on the males gets a little blockier, a little more spaced out. Um, it's got to be a hormonal thing, I guess. Anyway, we prefer the size and taste of the females for what we're doing, so we're going to go after three of the smaller ones. And 
these were the first fish of my trip, and I haven't used a pole spear in a year. So I was a little shaky to begin. The first shot went low here. The fish tears off, as you can see. And rule number one, once someone sticks a fish, it's game on. Everyone then tracks that fish. We leave no wounded fish in the ocean. So you get to the surface, you keep your eye on this fish the entire time. And I dove back down again, took another shot. <laughs> Missed her again, uh, but luckily she presented me a third shot. And now you can kind of see the, the strength of this pole spear, because I have some pretty good range with this thing. Most spear fishermen target the gill area, or just behind the gill, for the best chance at landing the fish. You put the spear through anywhere in, in that area, and you're going to... 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, I should say. If the spear goes all the way through, that fish will be in the boat. Now, it may look like the hogfish turned red when he came to the surface, but the truth is that the hogfish is red the entire time, and because he's at depth, he appears to be gray because red light is absorbed by water. And this is why the ocean appears blue, because it absorbs all the red light and reflects the blue light. Hogfish is a very light and white flaky meat. It has very little fish taste to it. So while hogfish is great, I actually prefer you know, other fish like grouper and snapper more with a richer flavor. And we've eaten so many hogs over the years that we have decided to get a little creative. And when Simon on the boat this year, he brought his culinary skills to the table and we decided to make some fish tacos out of these hogfish on this first day. They were exceptional. Simon knows what he's doing. And the whole time I'm out hunting, I'm actually looking for this fish as well. It's an invasive fish from Indonesia called the lionfish. It is well established that they are very destructive to the reefs. They have poison spines, so the larger fish don't eat them, and they really hammer the, the fry and the small fish on the reef. So the Bohemian government, as well as our own United States government, advocates the removal of these fish whenever they're seen. So I see one, I poke a hole in it every single time. You can eat them, and there's a couple of videos out there on YouTube showing how to do it. Basically, you need a pair of wire cutters to take those top poisonous spines off, and the fish has to be of you know sufficient size to make it worth your while too. But they say they cook up real good. We haven't had one as of yet because we haven't gotten enough large ones in large enough quantities to make it worth our while. Plus, you're out here 50, 80 miles from the nearest shore, 100 miles from the nearest hospital. You're talking about six to eight hours to get from here to medical treatment. This is not exactly the time to be taking chances with the fish you're filleting, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, and as the sun sets, we'll wrap up part one of uh, my Bahamas trip. In part two, I'll talk about how I dive deep. We'll cook up a couple more fish recipes. I'm gonna go after a fish that I haven't ever been able to get until this trip. And the best part is we bump into a pot of dolphins and let us swim with them for upwards of two hours. Take care folks, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye. We made it into Bimini. Captain and Simon are off uh, taking care of customs, um, permits, that kind of stuff. That's a hard ride over for me. Um, Connor, at one point, the captain, fell off his chair. Boat slid around. Um, big, big wave over the stern when we came into port here. But um, to be honest, that wasn't as, as bad as just being in the middle of the gulf, having the winds pick up, having that, that nine footer smack our boat, turn us sideways a bit, throw us all on the floor. Whew, uh, my nerves are shattered. Soon my stomach will catch back up, stop feeling like I need to hurl, stop feeling completely exhausted, and then we'll get this vacation, this holiday, uh, on track. Alright, that's enough. I probably don't even want to watch this video later on. I don't like seeing myself like this.
Okay, but we're here, we're in one piece. Let's start the fun. <laughs> okay, that's enough.